everyone, it's Sam aka Ocean Unknown and welcome back to my channel. This is episode 9 of my series of analyzing characters through the theatrical lens. I've hinted at this video a lot in my last analysis video, so I hope you all enjoy! If you've seen my last theatrical lens video, all of this will sound very familiar. On November 18th, 2022, Generation 9 of Pokemon started with the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Inspired by the Iberian Peninsula, the players explored the Paldea region with an open world experience and 107 new Pokemon. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have three stories that culminate in the endgame story, which I talk about more in my previous video. If you haven't seen it, go watch it after this one. These three stories correlate with the three rivals slash companion characters of the games. The Victory Road storyline for Nimona, a studious girl who loves Pokemon battles, the Starfall Street storyline for Penny, a quiet girl who's often absent from school, and lastly, the Path of Legends storyline for the character of the hour, Arvin. Arvin is an upperclassman at the academy the main character attends, the Naranja Academy in Scarlet and the Uva Academy in Violet, and he is enrolled in the humanities track of the academy. He admits that he's not very good at Pokemon battles, but is an excellent cook. Player first meets Arvin in front of the lighthouse on Poco Path as they, alongside Nimona and the legendary Pokemon that just saved them in a cave, approach him staring through the lighthouse's window. Arvin is startled by the legendary saying, Why that little? What are you doing here? So I apologize in advance for the voice I'm giving him. As much as I think Arvin has a sincere voice, when he's all pissy, I think he'd sound like, Because tonight will be the night that I will fall for you! Over again. Anyways, he tells the main character, Nimona, to shove off as Nimona recognizes him as a student at the academy and the son of the professor. He says, it doesn't matter who my parent is. He's confused as to why the legendary is there and Nimona explains everything that happened before they got here. Arvin explains how the legendary Pokemon can't fight when it's in his quadruped form and Nimona asks why Arvin knows its name. Arvin sees that the main character has taken a liking to the legendary Pokemon and challenges them to a Pokemon battle to test their worthiness to possess the legendary. As the main character defeats him, he gives the main character the legendary's Pokeball. Nimona asks why he even had it in the first place and he says, Anyway, that thing's your problem now, not mine. Good luck and runs off. The next time the main character runs into Arvin is at the academy on their first day. They run into him in the cafeteria as he says, oh, hey, so we meet again. I normally wouldn't even bother showing up for class, but I came all the way to school today just to talk to you, our new celebrity. You gotta help me out so I can make my dream a reality. The player can choose to say yes immediately or ask him to explain his dream, but I would like to share his response to the player saying yes immediately. What kind of little maniac says yes to something without even knowing what they're agreeing to? I don't know why this line is so funny. In fact, this line is followed up by an even funnier line. Well, this might come as a surprise, but in fact, I'm all about that picnic life. Huh? Imagine someone saying this in real life. Hey man, so what are you doing in your free time? Well, you know, I'm all about that picnic life. Sorry, huh? Yeah, I have like 50 red and white square blankets and 30 large baskets, and I go outside with all of them at once. Nobody talks like that. Anyways, Arvin pulls out a book, and if you've seen my last analysis video, you'll know the importance of this book. He's using the book to research new recipes to help heal Pokemon, and in the book, he found a page about Urban Mysticas. Urban Mysticas are special herbs that help heal Pokemon when they are consumed, and there are five of them scattered across the Paldea region. However, the book says that the herbs are guided by Titan Pokemon, which is where the main character comes in. He shows pages of what he believes are Titans, showing the monsters of Area Zero section. Oh no! It's back! It's a foreshadow! He says, I really want to get those herbs for myself, but I'm not very good at Pokemon battles. But here are you, Waltz up. You gotta help me out with this. You'd be perfect. He registers where the Titans are on the player's phone as the Path of Legends storyline is open. He runs off, and the player runs into him again at the center of Mesagoza City. As Nimona explains the open world treasure hunt experience that the Academy has sent all of their students off to do, Nimona and Arvin argue over what the main character is going to do on their treasure hunt. I love people fighting over me. After all of the paths are explained to the main character, Arvin says, a treasure of our very own. For me, that's got to be my, or my dream of tracking the Urbamistica, that is. 
Once we get those herbs, I'll make you the absolute best sandwich you've had in your life. The legendary Pokemon comes out of its Pokeball, excited about sandwiches, in which Arvin says, well, you're not getting one. As the main character mounts their legendary Pokemon, Arvin tells them he'll be by the east gate looking for Titan Pokemon. He heads off saying, catch up soon, little buddy. As the main character reaches the location of the first Titan, the Stony Cliff Titan Cloth, Arvin calls the main character saying he's having trouble finding the Titan. After fighting Cloth, it runs off and proceeds to smash into rocks, revealing a cave and eats the Herba Mystica. Arvin shows up to help the main character defeat Cloth as the Herba Mystica makes it stronger. After defeating the Stony Cliff Titan, Arvin thanks the main character for their help as they enter the cave and find the sweet Herba Mystica, which is good for gut health and to heal stomach aches. He then says, now if I can just get him to eat some. All right, now it's my turn to show off what I can do. You're about to get a taste of my cooking. Arvin makes sounds while cooking and gives the main character the sandwich. He also says he made his own badge using replicas of gym badges as a thank you for defeating the Stony Cliff Titan, which he calls Titan Badges. As Arvin and the player eat their sandwiches in the cave, the legendary Pokemon comes out of its ball and the player gives their sandwich to it. Arvin exclaims, hey, I went through all the trouble of making that for you and you just give it away? I hope you realize that's all there was. So now there's none left for you. He then feels bad and gives the player half of his sandwich as the legendary Pokemon gains power from consuming the Herba Mystica, giving it more strength. Arvin is excited about the power the Herba Mysticas have on Pokemon, saying, if they have that big an effect on your Pokemon, then I bet, uh... I bet it will come in super handy for that treasure hunt assignment we've got. After finishing the sandwiches, Arvin offers to clean up and suggests that the player starts researching for the other Urban Mysticas. As the player and the legendary Pokemon leave, Arvin says, I really owe you. He looks back and says, Okay, the coast is clear. Kneeling down on one knee, he says, You can come out now. At the start of the next Titan battle, the open sky Titan Bombardier, Arvin calls again trying to find it. After Bombardier flies away and unlocks the next cave, Arvin helps defeat the Titan after it eats some of the Herba Mystica, and they enter the cave to find the Bitter Herba Mystica. Arvin reads that the Bitter Herba Mystica is good for blood circulation, leaving the consumer warm and toasty. He continues to make some fun sounds while cooking, and he whips up even more sandwiches. I think this is the time I mention this. Can Arvin cook any other food that is in sandwiches? Like, I understand it's difficult to put more than one type of food in a video game, and this isn't a read to the artists and animators of the game. This is only shaded towards Arvin. You claim to be a good cook, but can you cook anything else? And Bob's your uncle. Uh? Is that even a phrase? What the f does that mean? Okay. Apparently, and Bob's your uncle is a phrase meaning, and there you have it. Many people theorize this phrase started after Prime Minister Robert Gascon Cecile, the Bob in the scenario, appointed his nephew as the Chief Secretary of Ireland in 1887. Many people disliked his nephew, and in response to how he was appointed, they say, and Bob's your uncle. <gasps> Nepotism. Arvin gives the player a sandwich and a new time badge as they look unlovingly at the bitter sandwich. Fishy, fishy, fish. I it stinky. As the legendary Pokemon wants the player's sandwich again, Arvin says that he made extra sandwiches and the player gives their sandwich to the Pokemon, giving it the power to swim. As the legendary sniffs the extra sandwich, Arvin yells, don't you dare touch that. That isn't for you. The player gets up as Arvin says, oh, uh, sorry. I shouldn't have started like that. Come on out, bud. Are you all ready to cry? Because I am. This is my boss, Steph, my partner. Here you go, bud. Eat up. The sandwich should help you feel better. Slowly now, take your time. Small bites are fine, just chew nice and slow. My buddy here was hurt pretty bad a while ago. Real bad, in fact. He never really recovered. After the player asks if regular medicine like potions or Pokemon centers didn't work, he says, They said this wasn't any regular old injury or illness. Mabofsev here is the only thing in the world I care about. The only thing. So, I'd promise that I'd make him better. Whatever it takes. I searched online, I read books, I looked all over and tried every cure and remedy I could find, but nothing really worked. I'd almost given up hope. That's when I found out about the Herba Mystica. Arvin reveals that he found the book he's been carrying around in his parents' lab. He shows the page about Herba Mysticas, which reveals that Herba Mysticas were first discovered in Area Zero, and the researchers in Area Zero tried to grow more outside the crater. However, Pokemon began to eat the crops and grew large and strong into Titan Pokemon. Arvin says, It's this book full of crazy stories and legends and things, stuff nobody usually believe. But I believe it. 
I think what it says is true. And according to the book, eating all five Herba Mystica can cure anything that ails you. Case in point, Mabafsa's paws were as cold as ice before he ate the last herb, but they've warmed up a little now. I'm sure they have. Mabafsif opens its eyes as Arvin says, Hey, Mabafsif, can, can you see? Are your eyes open? Yes, I did it. It's It's been so long since he was able to open his eyes. I was so worried. Oh man, I, I'm so, I'm so glad. I'm gonna bring my boss back to full health. I swear it. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's my story. Three herbs to go. Let's find them together. I'm not crying. You are. I care about Arvin and his dog so much. On the way to the third Titan, Arvin once again calls asking where it is. Arvin and the player defeat Orthworm, the lurking steel Titan, and find the Urban Mystica in the cave. While reading the book, Arvin says the salty Urban Mystica helps with aching hands and feet and is good for neuropathy numbness. After the last Titan, Arvin now openly says it'll help Mabostiff rather than saying an ominous he. He makes the sandwiches, saying, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm sorry, but while reading that, I read it in Junko from Dangarumpa's voice. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. He gives the player another sandwich and Titan badge saying, the Pokemon League might not recognize it, but I hope you appreciate it all the same. He sees it's his sandwich with even more salt as the player applauds? As the player gives their sandwich to their legendary Pokemon, Arvin gives his to Mabasta. The legendary Pokemon gives the ability to jump higher as Arvin realizes that the herbs are helping the legendary in its own way. He also realizes that the herbs are the reason behind how Titan Pokemon got big and strong, comparing the caves to a pantry. Mabostiff woofs, which excites Arvin as the herbs are healing Mabostiff just as planned. He then says, Ever since I teamed up with you, good things keep happening. When the player fights the fourth Titan, Arvin shows up to defeat the Quaking Earth Titan. However, there's something wrong with the Quaking Earth Titan. This Titan is a Paradox Pokemon from Area Zero. In Scarlet, it's Great Tusk, and in Violet, it's Iron Treads. Paradox forms the present day Pokemon Dawn fan. Arvin says, Wait, that's the Quaking Earth Titan? Uh, is, is that even a Pokemon? What even is that thing though? I kind of feel like maybe I've seen it before somewhere. After defeating the Quaking Earth Titan, they find the Sour Herb of Mystica. He says the herb is chock full of nutrients and is good for overall health, and gives the player another sandwich and Titan badge. The player and Arvin feed their Pokemon. The legendary gets the ability to glide, and the boss diff has a proper appetite. Arvin says, Seems like that fellow's all so slowly regaining its original strength. Still, doesn't look like it's anywhere close to returning to its battle form. It seems healthy enough physically. Maybe it's got some kind of mental block that's preventing it from returning to its true form. I've read about it before. A mental scar. Like psychological trauma, you know? I think that's what you call it. Maybe it had a terrifying experience in battle, so now it's scared to battle at all? Oh my god, you're back! The foreshadowing's back! He checks on his Mabostiff, but this Herba Mystica didn't have a big impact on him. He says, We've got one more herb to go, and I bet it's the best of them all. It's... it's gotta be. On the way to the final Titan, the False Dragon Titan, Arvin calls the player saying, Sure would be handy if it just ran around crying, I'm the Titan or something. If only, right? Hmm... Yeah, if only. As the player approaches Tatsugiri, it is swallowed up by the false dragon titan, Don Dozo. Arvin catches up saying, So that's it? Sure is one big, uh, dragon? Wait, is it even a dragon? Or is it a fish? Arvin's asking the real questions here. Wait until he finds out the literal palm tree and apple pie are dragons. Dondozo swallows Tatsugiri again, in which Arvin replies, the, the little sushi guy got eaten up by the Titan? Yeesh! Didn't expect to see the food chain in action today. As they defeat Dondozo together and are about to grab the last Urban Mystica, Arvin is startled and says, Whoa, the little sushi guy escaped without becoming that thing's lunch. Turns out Tatsugiri was the real false dragon Titan, and Arvin and the player defeat it. They enter the cave and find the final herb, the spicy Urban Mystica. He reads in the book that this Herba Mystica boosts metabolism and flushes out any toxin. He makes the last sandwich and gives his last Titan badge, saying, Squeeze that bag tight and cry beautiful tears of friendship as you eat, okay? Crying! I feel like this is what you do at Build-A-Bear when they tell you to squeeze the heart so it's warm and full of love. Now I want to go to Build-A-Bear. They're scared of spicy food, ooh! 
The player gives their sandwich to the legendary and they gain the ability to climb. As Ervin says, I guess it's Mabostiff's turn then. He gives Mabostiff the last sandwich saying, please get better. That's all I want, really. I'm just gonna show the next scene in its entirety. I can't do this amazing scene justice. As Arvin and Mabostiff are having their first happy moment in a long time, they are interrupted by the player's phone ringing. Arvin's parent, the professor, calls the player. Arvin says, what? The professor applauds the player for helping the legendary Pokemon regain all of its powers other than the power to battle. Arvin says, Puh, listen to you, like you had anything to do with it. Which the professor says, that voice. Arvin, are you there? I've been searching so long for a way to reach you because because no one else can get into my lab but you. He says, excuse me? As the professor instructs him to go to the lighthouse with the player, Arvin starts talking to Mabostiff and the player saying, I guess you probably already know, but that, that's my parent. Always buried under their work, are pursuing their own research, never at home with me. That's the first time I've ever heard their voice in years, you know? And now what? The first thing I get is to be treated like some kind of errand boy? They're seriously unbelievable. But I'm guessing you and your Pokemon want to go, eh? Not gonna lie, I feel like my blood's boiling, but sure, fine. I'll get you into that lab. What else can I do? Come on, let's get moving before I change my mind. I know this is a tense moment, but look at Mabofsif's toothy smile! Aww. As the player and their Pokemon leave, Arvin says, Where have you been all this time? As the scream fades to black. The player and Arvin meet again at the lighthouse where they first met, where Arvin says, Seriously? You beat me here? Well, this is the lab. I used to come here to play all the time when I was a kid. There better be a good reason for calling us here like this. Let's find out. Everyone always says, there's some kind of genius. Absolutely brilliant as a Pokemon professor, my parent that is. But let me tell you, as a parent, they're the worst. All they ever do is work. They never come home. I don't have a single memory of them even playing with me. Their own kid. Mabostiff's the only one who was there for me. Always. He unlocks the lighthouse and says, Anyways, it's open now. Go on in. I just want to get this over with. They enter the lab together to find a barren scene of a lab that appears like no one's been there for years. The professor appears on one of the computer monitors asking for help. The professor explains that they are in Area Zero in the Great Crater of Paldea and need help carrying out the final step of their research. They say they were called to the lighthouse to grab the Scarlet or Violet book, depending on the game, which Arvin already has as it's the book he used to find the Herba Mystica. The professor tells them to bring the book to the deepest depths of Area Zero as Arvin's anxiety starts to kick in. He says, Area Zero? That place is bad news. It was down in Area Zero that Mabostov got wounded in the first place, down in the Great Crater of Paldea. In all honesty, I'd be perfectly happy to never see that place again. Are you gonna go? After the player says yes, he says, I suppose they did ask. And I can't just stand by and watch while a friend heads off into danger on their own. So I guess I'm going to. Besides, I love to give them a piece of my mind. He then says that he and the player are going to have a Pokemon battle to see if they're ready to go to Area Zero. The player meets him outside where he says, Excellent, you're ready too, right Mabostiff? Yep, Mabostiff says he's ready. As Mabostiff was literally on his deathbed a couple scenes ago, the player is rightfully concerned about Arvin using Mabostiff in battle. Arvin says, Okay, yeah, I can see why you're worried. But my buddy here is bursting with energy. You'd never know he was so weak just a little while ago. Won't leave me alone. Always whining at me, wanting to battle you and your Pokemon. It's been so long I nearly forgot, but he always did love to battle. Even if we always lost to that student council girl, the battle fanatic one. Anyway, my point is there's no need to worry. We're a brand new Arvin and Mabostiff, and we're feeling audacious. 
or maybe herbaceous? Let me give you a taste of what we can do. The player in Arvin battle with Arvin's team consisting of all the Pokemon he used throughout the Path of Legend storyline. A Greedent, Toadscroll, Scovillain, Cloyster, Garganackle, and ending with Mabasta. After being defeated, Arvin says they should find some allies to go with to Area Zero. Someone with champion rank battle skills and someone good with technology. They promise to make a team together and head off in separate ways. The next time the player hears from Arvin is after they finish the Victory Road and Starfall Street stories. They head back to Mezagoza as Arvin calls them saying, Yo, Arvin here. <laughs> Whoa, damn boy, don't you jump like that. Seems like hearing your voice has all my boss if all worked up. Aww. Oh, but that's not why I called. Nearly forgot. You remember what we talked about before? About going to Area Zero? Well, all the effort you've been putting in around Paldea has really helped you make a name for yourself. Build up some goodwill, that's for sure. So I've been able to secure two allies who want to go to Area Zero with us. That should have us ready to tackle anything. So now we've all just gotta go there. First up, we'll be gathering at Area Zero. I'll be ready and waiting at the Zero Gate. I'll send you the location on your phone too. Don't you leave me hanging forever. We'll be waiting. Arvin hangs up and the player makes it to the Zero Gate. Arvin is right at the entrance as he yells, Hey, over here. Run over to him as he explains. This is the Zero Gate. It was made so researchers could try to observe the inside of the great crater of Paldea, what folks call Area Zero. It's our ticket down into the crater. Oh, and speaking of the crater, you know that Pokemon of yours? The one I gave you? Area Zero is apparently where they were born. Or something like that. Maybe it'll be happy that it can finally come back home? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Not that I really care or anything. Anyway, our two new teammates should be waiting for us inside the Zero Gate. Guess we should head in. As Arvin and the player head towards the Zero Gate, the end game of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet begins. They enter the gate and find their two allies, Nimona and Penny. Arvin explains that he asked Nimona to come with and when she heard there were strong Pokemon to battle in Area Zero, she said yes. Penny arrives saying she arrived to help the player. And then Arvin gives his introduction before being interrupted by the professor over the intercom. Arvin explains that that's his parent. Probably. When Penny asks if Arvin told the professor about them, he says, When would I have done that? He then tries to talk to his parent over the intercom, but they ignore him telling everyone to proceed below. As the friends head to the platform above Area Zero, the player sends out the legendary Pokemon so they can glide into Area Zero, but the legendary gets scared. Arvin says, Hmm, scared of heights. That's what I'd say. Arvin jumps on the back of the legendary as Nimona and Penny do the same right after. Just as the legendary is about to jump off the cliff, Arvin grabs the player's hand as they glide into the great crater of Paldea. As they make it to Area Zero, the professor calls them again, in which Arvin says, ha, yeah, smooth sailing. Who could possibly complain about a landing like that? The professor ignores Arvin's sarcasm and continues to explain how to get to them in the Zero Lab by unlocking locks in four separate research stations. After defeating a Glamora guarding the first research station, Arvin says, you think that was something? Please. You got no idea how terrifying Area Zero really is. On the way to the second research station, Arvin says, I almost never saw my parent in my whole life. They were always busy with work. Hardly ever came home. I cooked for myself, cleaned for myself, but Bostiff was the only one I had to talk to. So yeah, I don't really know them at all, even if they are my parent. I tried not to think too much about it. Tried to just be proud that they were this famous genius. But the thing is, I would have rather just had a parent who was there, even if they weren't anything great. I haven't seen them in ages now, unless you count seeing them in the news or whatever. Used to get at least emails sometimes, but even those stopped a couple years ago. And then there they appear, out of the blue, and tell me we've gotta come to Area Zero. <laughs> some family, right? Last time I came to the Great Crater, I was trying to go see my parent. I got about this far, then I got attacked by some kind of creature I'd never seen before, and it hurt my boss stiff real bad, so it's not like I just forget. I don't ever want to run into that awful thing again. As they approach the second research station, they encounter their first Paradox Pokemon, Screamtail and Scarlet and Iron Bundle and Violet. The player and Penny defeat the Paradox Pokemon, and the friends wonder what that Pokemon was. Arvin pulls out his book, wondering if it was one of the supposed supposed monsters of Area Zero described in the book. The professor interrupts on the intercom to explain that the Zero Lab has a time machine invented by them and Paradox Pokemon came from different timelines. Arvin asks his parent, why did you call us here to Area Zero? The professor says, Arvin, I, if possible, I would like us to speak when we can meet face to face. It will be easier for you to understand once you can see the situation for yourself. And the deflecting from the professor is crazy. Gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss, man's boy, manipulate, and male wife. Arvin is visibly upset about this as the player unlocks the next lock. He says, you know that book they told me to bring? 
I think it's got something to do with this place. Or more like, everything to do with this place. But I'm not the one they expect to fix whatever all this is. You are. I think you should be the one to carry it. He hands the player the Scarlet or Violet book as the friends search for the third research station. When they reach the third research station, they are attacked by either Great Tusk or Iron Treads, and Arvin offers to battle it with the player. After defeating it, Arvin says, Maybe the one we saw when we were searching out the Herba Mystica came from down here. Maybe? I'm sorry, I thought we already established that it did. Did we? Arvin, I love you, but you're asking questions that were answered a while ago. Penny asks the real question of, isn't the professor doing anything to keep them under control? How could they let this happen? In which Arvin says, yeah, right, because it's not like the oh-so-brilliant professor ever messes up. <laughs> Get a date. The friends enter the third research station as Nimona and Penny debate over if Coridon or Maridon is a paradox Pokemon. Nimona then says, Wait a second, I totally forgot. Hey, Arvin, you had its ball, and you told us about its forms in the first place. You must know something about it, right? He replies, You still remember that from way back? No wonder you're everybody's little star pupil. Guess I've got no choice then. But to tell you what I know, that Pokemon, it was found by my parent when they were working on their time machine. The professor interrupts again on the intercom to further explain what Arvin was getting at, in which that Coridon and Maridon are paradox forms of the current Pokemon Cyclozar, which is very common in the Paldea region, and that they were only able to bring two specimens of the legendary Pokemon to the present. The player disables the third lock, and the friends head off to disable the fourth and final lock. While on the way down into the depths of Area Zero, the friends talk about the legendary Pokemon and how it's from another timeline. Arvin says, that was the first time I've heard of it coming from another time myself. It was just some weird Pokemon my parent brought home all of a sudden one day. We all lived together at the lighthouse lab for a little while. My parent made me promise to keep it a secret, and I had to take care of it for them too. Yeah, but then one day it just went nuts against some wild Pokemon. A few of the folks living nearby ended up seeing it, so the secret was out. Once that happened, my parent took it and went back to Area Zero. I didn't see my parent or the Pokemon again after that, for ages. Looking back on it now, it seems stupid, but... The friends make it into the cave where Arvin then says... Professor's down there somewhere, waiting for us. And that's fine. Totally fine. All right, team, watch yourselves and let's get to the bottom of this thing. Yeah, this place is like something from a whole other world. Makes you feel like maybe you already died and went somewhere. Damn, that was quite dark, especially for a Pokemon game. Like, they wouldn't do that, right? They wouldn't kill off a character, right? The friends make it to the fourth and final research lab, and if you saw my last video, this station reveals a lot about Arvin's parent. As they walk in, it's completely busted up with crystals and broken machines everywhere. The professor calls on the intercom, but starts acting really weird. They unexpectedly end the call after saying, initiating, restart. And the player once again can look at the professor's journals in the lab. In the first journal, it says the professor's assistant left not so long after Arvin was born. After the supposed signal interference, Arvin is questioning if this is even his parent, saying that that was almost like, no, it can't be. After disabling the fourth and final lock, the friends continue traveling downward to reach the Zero Lab in order to find the professor. Arvin is noticeably more upset after the strange and glitchy intercom call with the professor. As they reach the Zero Lab, the professor calls again to explain that once they open the gate, dangerous Pokemon will try to break for freedom. Before the player presses the switch to open the gate to the Zero Lab, Arvin says, hold it. Look, if it's true that a bunch of really dangerous Pokemon might come out at us, then shouldn't we also have the legendary Pokemon help? At first, the friends disagree, but Arvin says, But it's really strong. I know it is. It ate all those Herba Mystica we found, too. When it really matters, I'm sure it'll fight. And Area Zero is where it used to live. If you bring it out of its ball now, maybe it'll be able to find its family too, right? The player sends out their Pokemon, but the other of its species scares it off. Arvin says that the other legendary gave off bad vibes, then encourages the player's Pokemon to strive to become stronger in order to stand up to its bully. As a crowd of dangerous paradox Pokemon surround the friends, Arvin stays behind to battle the Pokemon. He tells the legendary Pokemon, you really ruined my whole childhood, you know. But it's not like seeing you cowering and scared out of your wits makes me feel any better about it. You've got amazing powers if you just use them. And You've got us too. So, 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 so don't you even think about losing to that jerk. Be brave, stand up and fight. So if you saw the Sada and Turo video I made about a month ago, you know what's coming. So the professor the player has been talking to throughout the game is not the professor. The player has been talking to an AI power robot instead. And the professor, Arvin's parent, has been dead the entire time. 
Also, I wrote this part of the video on January 18th, which is Mateus Ward's, who played Marcus's birthday. So happy very late birthday, Mateus, as this is coming out on April 15th. I'm sorry I use your eyebrow raise constantly in my videos. <laughs> It is heavily implied that the dangerous Maridon or Kuridon killed the professor while they protected the Kuridon or Maridon that the player has been accompanied by, as the AI professor asked the player to stop the original professor's time machine. As the AI discusses how the professor died in the elevator down to the time machine, they said, I am afraid that this fact may be difficult for their son Arvin to accept. As I have already made a whole video about Sada and Turo, I discussed the full battle with the AI versions of them in that video, so I'm gonna skip it here, but if you'd like to hear about it, watch my analysis of Sada and Turo after watching this video, of course. After the player defeats the AI professor, Arvin runs in with Nimona and Penny. Upon seeing the malfunctioning robot wearing his parents' face, Arvin says, Okay, out with it, you. Who are you, really? The AI still glitching says, th th Thank you for, for everything. The time machine has finally, they have finally been stopped. Arvin replies, You're really not them, are you? The AI professor continues talking, saying, Oh, look how big you've grown. So p proud of you, my. Sorry, you were alone so, so long. This makes Arvin question if a little bit of his family is inside this cold machine, but before he knows it, the robot is taken over by the Paradise Protection Protocol. He tries to reach out to the AI as it tells them to run, but then the AI wields the Pokemon that is heavily implied to have killed his parent. As the player cannot use their own Pokeballs in the fight, Arvin yells, That's totally cheating! Can you call yourself an adult? The player has a loophole of battling the aggressive legendary Pokemon with their own legendary Pokemon, which Arvin gets very excited about. Like, look at his little dancey dance in the back! <laughs> After the Paradise Protection Protocol is defeated, the AI professor decides to use the time machine to travel to the period the professor was infatuated with, thus stopping the time machine as they are the only thing keeping the time machine going. Arvin is shocked by this news as the AI says, Arvin, I'm sorry that I kept the truth from you for so long. I inherited all the thoughts and wishes of the professors, and so I understand better than any, parent truly loved you. Arvin responds, you, you can't. You can't just go and say a thing like that now. They say, no. I suppose you're right. I am sorry. Arvin calls out to his parent right before the AI goes into the time machine, shutting it down for good. Arvin says, how could you just go? Nimona asks if he's okay, and he says, yeah, somewhere deep down, I kind of already knew it. I knew that thing was fake, but it, when it said my name, using their voice and wearing their face, even if it was fake, it felt real, you know? And so I just, I, sorry. I don't know what I'm saying. Penny tries to reassure Arvin by saying that AI professor is probably enjoying being in the time period they've studied for years. He appreciates her sentiment as they all head home. As they all start walking home, Arvin is hesitant to take the long way back with everyone else, but is pushed by the legendary as he says, Oh, alright, fine. I guess we're doing this. As the friends all head off on the way home. The sweet and tender moment that ends Arvin's story in the main story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is interrupted by Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Like While the main story revolving Arvin was completed in the main part of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I would like to discuss his parts in the post game as well. The friends are called to Clavel's office where he congratulates them on stopping the time machine from harming Paldea by giving them with Master Balls. Clavel then says to Arvin, I'm so sorry to hear about the professor. You have my deepest condolences. Arvin replies, Ah, uh, well, yeah, it was pretty rough when I found out they had died. But weirdly enough, my head actually feels clear now. For the first time in ages, in the Great Crater, I got to learn a bit about their research and what they were trying to achieve down there. I guess if you're building something as mind-blowing as a time machine, that takes priority over showering your son with attention, huh? All I know is I'm done feeling like some lost little kid. Time to say goodbye and move on. I'm gonna enjoy every last day till graduation with my buds here. And my boss tip, of course. Clavel then says he is truly his parent's son, but then reads him to filth, saying he doesn't have anywhere near the amount of credits to graduate. He says, You'll need to study frantically to catch up, but I have every expectation of your success. Arvin then becomes the embodiment of the other sound effect I use. Uh -huh. Afterwards, Arvin decides to compete in the Academy Ace tournament, and after the player defeats him, they chat with him in the cafeteria. He says, Seems like all my closest buddies are in another league, you know? I mean, look at you. 
you just up and become a champion in your first year to boot. You know that's pretty amazing, right? Then there's Nimona, top marks in every class at school, and she's champion rank too. And I hear Penny's got some kind of offer to work for the Pokemon League or something. I seem to be the only average one around. Nothing special about me. If you choose the bottom option, you're an absolute buffoon. I'm sorry. My boy Arvin does not deserve that. Arvin talks about how he learned to cook because of his familial neglect, but then has an epiphany. He says, See, now that Mabostiff is doing so much better, and since the treasure hunt is still going and all, I've been thinking of a new goal to find myself. And I guess you've really got to start by knowing where you come from, which means I should learn more about my parent, right? They were a student at the school once too. That's what I heard. I'm gonna search the whole school for info about what kind of person they really were. He researches the professor's studies with the help of Clavel, where he realizes that a huge part of Clavel's office was once the professor's research lab. Clavel explains that when the professor was a student, they become so enveloped in their work they would barely go to their dorm. Later on, Arvin invites the player to his dorm room, which is very well decorated and full of ingredients and cooking supplies. He says that after rereading the Scarlet or Violet book, he's decided to become a chef to help Pokemon feel good like how he helped Mavasta feel better. Arvin's side quest in the post game of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet ends with him saying, so I guess I can close this book on my little hunt to find myself. Time to start a new chapter, one that's all about working towards my new dream. Old work ahead. Uh, yeah, I sure hope it does. As always with these videos, we need to identify the protagonist, antagonist, given circumstances, and the climax. If you've seen my analysis on Sada and Turo, you already know who the protagonist of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is through the theatrical lens, but for those who haven't seen that video, I can gladly explain. Video games merge the idea of a protagonist with the player in real life. However, through the theatrical lens, the protagonist is the person who is searching for a goal and at the end of the story, we as the audience find out if they achieved that goal or not. If we look at Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as a whole, the protagonist through the theatrical lens is Arvin. Out of all of the characters, Arvin is the one who searches for a goal that gets achieved at the end of the story. Arvin is searching for some form of closure regarding his family and why his life is the way it is. While he achieves one of his goals at the end of the Path of Legend storyline, The Way Home, the final storyline still has a major focus on him. Moreover, the antagonist in video games tends to be the final boss or any villains in the story. In the lens of video games, the professor is the major antagonist, and in the theatrical lens, I agree. The professor is the main person preventing Arvin Arvin from achieving his overall goal of receiving closure and at the end of the story, Arvin achieves his goal. Moving on to given circumstances, some of the given circumstances related to Arvin in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are that he is the son of the professor, he is an upperclassman at the academy studying humanities, and he loves cooking. Next is the climax. In the video game lens of storytelling, the climax of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is the final battle between the main character and the AI professor, ending with their legendary Pokemon defeating its rival. In the theatrical lens, the climax happens in this scene, but it's not the whole scene. The climax in the theatrical lens is when the AI professor says to Arvin, I inherited all the thoughts and wishes of the professor, and so I understand better than any, your parent truly loved you. This sentence is where Arvin's goal is achieved and his question is answered. I haven't said this in so long. It's major dramatic question time! That was so off key, oh my god. <laughs> The major dramatic question of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is, will Arvin receive closure? Uncovering the truth is a massive theme in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which is very evident in Arvin's arc as a character. Arvin wants to understand why his parent, the professor, was so negligent in his life and why they've stopped communicating with him altogether. He also wishes to have closure to protect those he cares about, such as his Babastiff. At the beginning, Arvin first wants closure as to why Koridon and Maridon is outside Area Zero and what this has to do with his parent. Throughout the story, he earns more understanding about his parent and everything they've done. As Mabostiff gets better and the friends travel to Area Zero to finally meet them, his feelings towards his family are revealed, which leads us to the big reveal at the end in the climax. In the climax, Arvin gets his closure when the AI professor says that the real professor loved him, which answers his major dramatic question with a yes. Arvin received his closure, and despite the fact that he earns a bit more closure in the postgame regarding his parent, the true closure he was looking for was if he was loved by his parent, which he now understands was true. 
Now that this is a tradition in this series, I will now discuss some theories about Arvin's character. However, I genuinely could not find any theories about Arvin specifically, so for this segment, I'm going to discuss theories about Arvin that were made before Pokemon Scott and Violet were released. Many people speculated that Arvin was the son of the professor, which ended up being true. Most of the evidence that led everyone to this conclusion was the fact that Arvin's hair colors matched Zada and Turo's hair colors. Moving on to a theory that turned out to be false, some people speculated that Arvin was the villain of the game. A lot of players of Pokemon Pokemon Scarlet and Violet believed this would be the case because of his not-so-nice attitude at the beginning of the game and his suspicious behavior before the second Path of Legends quest. In a Reddit forum regarding the subject, many people said after our resident unhinged pretty boy Volo turned out to be the villain of Pokemon Legends Arceus, they grew suspicious of Arvin and if he'd secretly be the villain of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. However, this has been debunked and we'll have to see if the DLC adds more to Arvin as a character. Get to Del Taco! They got a new thing called Frisha- Free, free Shavaka do! Free sh While we've discussed Arvid's position as the protagonist of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, let's discuss some theatrical elements in his character. First, let's discuss foils and how Arvin adheres to the themes of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. As I mentioned in my last analysis video, there can be an argument made that Arvin and the Professor are foils for each other as the Professor's lack of compassion emphasizes Arvid's compassion towards those he loves such as his friends in Mabostiff. His parents' lack of care towards their son highlights Arvin's helpful, loving personality. Moving on to the themes of the game, the main themes of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are past versus future, finding your own treasure, and uncovering the truth, which I also covered in my Sada and Turo video. In the past versus future storyline, Arvin represents a huge message of the game regarding that theme, the importance of living in the now and enjoying life. After learning about his parents' infatuation with another timeline, he decides to enjoy every day he has with Mabostiff and his friends, and also decides to find a dream for himself, which ends up wanting to be a cook. As far as the theme of finding your own treasure, Arvin finds his treasure in more ways than one. He heals his beloved partner Pokemon, gets closure of what happened to his parent, and learns to find himself and pursue a story of his own. Also, while we're talking about Arvin finding his path of helping others and a story of his own, I wanted to bring up the origins of his name. Arvin is derived from the plant Mentha Arvenus, a flower in the mint family. The leaves of Mentha Arvenus are used to make teas and to aid digestion and treat colds. This suits Arvin's character very well as he's looking for flower-like herbs to treat his Mabostiff's illness. Lastly, Arvin pertains to the theme of uncovering the truth as he is the one who uncovered many truths in the games, mostly about the Urban Mysticas and the whereabouts of the Professor. Finally, let's discuss Arvin's design and color psychology behind his design. Arvin wears the Academy uniform with long pants, a puffer vest, brown hiking boots with yellow laces, and a matching yellow hiking backpack. I mostly want to focus on the yellow that is repeated in his design. Universally, yellow is symbolic for warmth and sunshine, and in Japan, yellow often represents courage. Yellow is also often used to brighten the mood or uplift, and it can also inspire hope. Arvin is a supportive friend to the player and he wishes to brighten his friend's spirits with his presence in cooking. He is also an incredibly compassionate and loving character, which is highlighted by this bright yellow color. Indeed, these designs for Arvin's character tell the audience a lot about him and boost the story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Duke, do you want the ball? All in all, Arvin from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is a character who has a lot of theatrical elements in his character. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. One like equals one massive picnic blanket. You can still see me. Comment down below what characters you'd like to see in the series next, and what's your favorite new character from Pokemon Spud and Violet? Personally, I love all of the characters, but I'll have to go with Hassel, Iono, and Atticus. What can I say? I love my fellow artists, YouTubers, and costume designers. I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much.